a great surprise in my mailbox this week. I've gotten the first seed catalog of the year and Thompson and Morgan won the prize for getting theirs out first. Well, like most gardeners, I've been busy perusing the catalog and finding all those great things to plant. But now, right now, as you're taking things out of the garden, is a great time to keep some records to help you in planning your gardens for next year. It doesn't take much time, but if you can take a small notebook or anything like that and put inside, just on a sheet of paper, what you had planted this year. Now some people get very elaborate and others just jot down what they had in. You can, this can help you with a practice called crop rotation. Now crop rotation is just exactly what it sounds like, a practice of rotating crops out and not planting the same thing in the same place every year. Well you can do this by families of plants. You can um, rotate out things in the tomato family such as tomatoes and potatoes, peppers and eggplants, and plant other things such as things in the onion family, like onions, shallots, leeks, and garlic. Another group is the beet family, which contains beets, Swiss chard, and spinach. The cold crop family includes such things as cabbages and cauliflower, and also broccoli and Brussels sprouts. The legume family contains beans, peas, cowpeas, and peanuts. And the carrot family includes carrots, celery, and parsley. The cucurbits include watermelon, cantaloupe, pumpkin squash, and cucumber. And finally, the lettuce family includes all those leafy vegetables that you plant. Now in the rotation process, you can rotate these families out and put others in. And a good rule to follow is to follow planting crops with deep roots with a family that has shallow roots. So this is a very good practice to follow. Well, the time we spent planting our fall vegetable crop in the heat of August is finally beginning to pay off. And here we have a great crop of cauliflower. Well, it's getting a little close to time for things to freeze down, and so we're going to go ahead and harvest some of these today, even though they're a little bit small. Now, this variety is called orange bouquet, and after I get it harvested here, I'll show you why. This has just been a beautiful crop. The leaves are nice and big, and we haven't had a problem with pests. Now we're going to cover these with plastic and try and get as many um, heads of cauliflower as we can off of this. But we wanted to harvest some so we know for sure what it tastes like. Now here you'll notice that it really does have an orange tint to it. It's very pretty. It almost looks like it's got butter on it. And we're very anxious to see how this tastes because it does make a beautiful hit. Well, moving along here, let's look at some of our salad crops that we planted. Now we planted the edible purslane and you'll see it's not a big stand, but it's enough to get the idea of what it's like. Now, if I taste this, it tastes a lot like lettuce, but it's got more body, so it add a little bit more of a crunch to your salad, and it's really pretty good. Next, we've got the good old standby. We've got some black seeded Simpson lettuce that I'm going to harvest, and I'm going to take these off. We're going to leave these in and see if we can get a few more leaves off before the frost, because we are covering these at night. So I'm going to take some of this lettuce in with me. I've also got some chicory here that I'm going to harvest a few of the leaves off of and add those to my salad. And again, we're going to leave these and see if we can get a few more leaves off of them before they freeze down. Next, I've got some collards that I'm going to harvest. And what I'm going to do here is take off these outer leaves that are large and leave these middle leaves to go ahead and enlarge. Now these I'm going to fix much like I would spinach. I'm going to go ahead and just boil those, maybe with a little bit of bacon and a little bit of um, onions in there. And that should make a good dinner. Well, come on over here to the cold frame. I want to show you some of more of our crops that we planted. Now again, today it's sunny, so we've got the frame back here and it's open, and we already harvested the radishes. Remember I told you they were very fast, and these were done in three weeks. But I have with me 
my clippers here and I'm going to clip a few of the mustard greens. Now these are just beautiful. They have this wonderful ruffle around the edge of the leaves and we don't really have a bit bad pest problem on these yet. Now the mustard, you want to cut that up pretty small when you put that in the salad because it's got quite a bit of a kick to it. So that'll add a little bit of spice to the salad. So we've got a nice salad and we've got some greens for our dinner. So I'm going to have a good dinner tonight. Well our heirloom tomatoes that we planted are really showing the signs of the last freeze that we had at the studio gardens. But we still have some tomatoes on here. Now, even if we take the time to pick these and take them in, wrap them up, and keep them in a warm place, they're probably not going to ripen because they're not showing any signs of pink at all. So we have a lot of green tomatoes. Well, what can you do with all these green tomatoes? Well, if you like fried green tomatoes, it's a good time of year to have that. And you can also make green tomato relish. But I think what we're going to do is make some tomato relish for our compost pile. Well, one other thing I want to show you is I want to check on our orchard and see what our potential is for an apple crop for next year. So let's go look at that. Well, if you'll recall those cold snaps we had last winter, plus a few late spring freezes, pretty much took out the fruit crop in our orchard. We didn't have any peaches or cherries, not many apples, and hardly any pears. But we have potential for a good crop of apples this next year. Right here is an Arkansas black apple, which is a good variety for this area. And I just want to show you how you can tell the potential for a crop. If you look on the stems here, this is a spur type apple, which means it bears its fruit out on these short little spurs. And you can just see them all along the stem here. Now, see this bud, how it's nice and fat. That is, an, is a bud that has a potential for being an apple because it's got a flower bud in there. Now if we move up here, you'll see this bud. It's very small and pointy and it's not fat. That is only going to contain leaves, so that's not a potential for an apple. But if you move on up here, we've got another potential apple. And these are pretty much spaced pretty evenly all the way up the stem here. So we have a good potential for an apple crop. Now remember, they've still got to make it through the winter and through those spring freezes, but right now it's looking pretty good for a crop. Also, you'll want to notice here I've got a branch coming out and there aren't any buds on there that are fat. That's because this is a one-year-old branch of wood. Now apples fruit on wood that is two years old or older. So when you're doing your pruning, You'll want to remember that. If you really prune it back hard, it's going to take two or three years to start getting good crops of apples out of that. Well, as I mentioned pruning, we're not going to do any pruning right now because the best time to prune your fruit trees is in February and early March, after they've gone through that deep freeze of the winter. So you can prune out any winter damage that's there. So right now, we're just going to let these go into the winter, and we'll come back and prune in the spring. But we've got the potential for a great crop. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.